Hello, our online service. It's so good to be here, looking to you, and hopefully you are safe, you are well. We are praying every day for you. You belong to this church. You are part of this wonderful family of Jesus Christ around the world. We are facing hard times, but God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? He is our Savior. He is our mighty Lord. So please enjoy this time. Prepare your family. Prepare your heart to receive a wonderful word from God. And let's worship Him because He deserves all glory. In Jesus' name, let's go. Down borders, 
So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes on both the way. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am you. Are you hurt and broken with fear? Overwhelmed by the weight of our sea? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Left behind your regrets and stay Today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring us sorrows and train them from joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father
Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for all of you. What kind of fear do you have in your heart? We are no longer slaves to fear. And I want to pray for all of you. Maybe you are in need right now or someone from your family. Let's join our faith together. I want to pray for you. Please close your eyes. Let's join our faith and let's pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same power he had in the past to heal people. He's the same and he's going to touch you. Please say right now what you need to him. Open up your mouth right now and start saying, Jesus, I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my family. I need a miracle for my children. Start praying right now. Beloved Father, we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters right now. Whatever they are, Holy Spirit, go and touch their lives. Break all barriers in their lives. Break all power of Satan that is holding their lives. I declare spirit of fear, get out of their lives. Father, I pray may the Holy Spirit can come right now touching their body. Those who are sick, those who are in pain, be healed. In Jesus' name, I rebook all kind of pain over your life. Receive healing right now. Father, those who are in need of something, Father, some documents or some miracles, they are praying for a new job. Father, I pray, open the doors right now. May this week they can receive a miracle. In Jesus' name, receive right now the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Holy Spirit, come, touch their lives. Anoint my brothers and sisters right now. Receive a healing. Receive all the blessings that you are asking. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I declare the power of the cross working in your life, working in your children's life, working in your marriage. Father, I pray for our families right now. Bless their marriage. Bless their families, Lord. I pray for salvation over our family and relatives. Those who are lost, we pray for salvation over their lives. Save them, Father. Because we want to see our family and relatives saved and in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I bless you. In Jesus' name I declare healing upon your life. If you believe, say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hello, beautiful and blessed people. It is so good to have you with us once again. And I have been sharing a series of messages about the end times and the events that will happen at Jesus' return. And today's message is the rapture. This is a message from God to you. So rest assured that you will be very blessed. Amen? And also, if you have been blessed so far, share this message that will bless others, brothers and sisters. Amen? The whole world is changing. Non-Christians are saying that the world is moving towards the end. If you look what is happening in the world, you are going to see crowded hospitals, airports stalled 
are totally stopped. The world economy crashing. And also many people filled of fear and awe. But if you believe in Jesus, you have nothing to fear. Amen? Nothing to fear. This is a time to rejoice and praise God. Because our redemption is at hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, it's time to preach the gospel. To preach the word of God. And to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. And soon, we will come back. Hallelujah. <laughs> and whoever reads the Bible, sees that Everything that has been happening for these past weeks are signs spoken by Jesus about His return. Signs in nature, signs in heavens, signs on earth and at sea. And also, if you read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, you will see or you will find out more about all these physical signs. Please read all these, these chapters in the, in, the, in the gospel. And you are going to, to see about Jesus' return. But today I'm not going to talk about these physical events that are happening in all of the world. Today, I want to share about the rapture. And I particularly believe in my heart that we are very close to the coming of Jesus. I am, in my heart, I have that very strong that we are going close to Jesus return and because of this I have consecrated myself prepared myself and sought the Lord with all my heart and I am here to encourage you to do the same and I want to read our first verse today first that talks about the rapture and I want to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 to 18. That says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who do not have hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Verse 15. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ we raise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Many Christians do not understand that Jesus' coming will happen in two stages. Yes, one 
is the rapture of the church and the other is the return of Christ and the rapture of the church and the return of Jesus are two different things and many read the Bible but cannot understand that as they mix the two events up first the first event is called the rapture of the church what is the rapture of the church Jesus comes down and we meet him in the air and this meeting is only for believers true believers he comes to seek the faithful and those who are persevering sanctifying themselves and who are in loving and faithful relationship with the Lord this is what's going to happen after the rapture the church there is another event that takes place seven years later okay after the rapture of the church there is another event that takes place seven years later and this event is the return of Jesus at the end of the great tribulation in which Jesus will appear in the heavens during the battle of Armageddon and and will descend on the in the a white horse with his army yes it's gonna be wonderful <laughs> what is the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus do you know the rapture is invisible or Jesus does not step on this earth in the rapture nobody sees it only through Christians who are prepared and filled with the oil in their lamps will hear the trumpet sound and will be raptured to meet the Lord in the air hallelujah and the second coming of Jesus every eye will see the Bible says the whole earth will witness it for it will be like a lightning in the heavens this is written in Matthew and I want to read for you Matthew 24 verse 27 that says for us lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west so will be the coming of the son of man beloved brothers and sisters remember one thing that Jesus disciples were Jews okay and in Matthew 24 he Jesus answered the question to his Jewish disciples with a prophetic sermon or Jesus tells them when the end of the world and the establishment of his kingdom would be okay Jesus answer was to the Jews okay Jesus answer was to the Jews which is why he does not present the rapture to the Jews okay he didn't say about the rapture because he was talking to a Jewish people and his disciples were Jews but he does present the second come to the Jewish people in the rapture the church goes up and at the second coming Jesus comes down with the church and according to Zechariah 14 verse 4 
He steps on the Mount of Olives. And this mountain will be split in two when he lands. And, he, and then he will come in this time to judge the earth. The rapture takes place before tribulation. The second coming takes place after the great tribulation. So there are two completely different events. Okay? Totally different. But some people, they mix both. Jesus tells to the Jew about the second coming and the reign of Christ. And also, Paul the Apostle, he writes for the church and he speaks about the rapture. And also in the book of Apocalypse, he talks about the two even, events, the rapture and the second coming of Jesus. In Revelation, there are two doors that are open opened in heavens one in chapter 4 and another in chapter 19 let's read Revelation 4 verse 1 let's see the first door after this I looked and there and there before me was a door standing open in heaven a door standing open in heaven and the voice and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Or in chapter 4 verse 1, John sees one open door in heaven and a voice like a trumpet saying, Come up. Here, this is the rapture. And also in Revelation 19, verse 11, a door is also open in the heavens. But then Jesus comes down with his armies. In the first time, he goes up. But in, in Revelation 19, Jesus comes down with his armies which are us, the church. And he comes to judge and destroy the Antichrist, the false prophet, and everything ends with the battle of Armageddon. Understand this. The rapture is for the church. The second coming is for, is for the whole world. Okay. During the, the rapture, we ascend. At the second come, Jesus descend with his church to judge the earth and to rule the world during the millennium. Also understood that we will read now 1 Thessalonians 4 from 16 to 17. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves then together with them we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air then we will be with the Lord forever beloved brothers and sisters the rapture of the church was presented by Paul the Apostle as a mystery 
in which the dead in Christ are first raised in a blink of an eye and then we that live will be brought up also to meet the Lord in the air it's wonderful and what happens right after the rapture the rapture here on earth what's going to happen I have already spoken about it in the first message that I gave in this series and if you have not watched it, it please watch it because we do not have time to speak of it okay again but after that a peace treat will be signed between the nations and the Antichrist and thus the great tribulation will begin Thessalonians chapter 4 that we read talks about the rapture but Thessalonians 5 Paul talks about the day of the Lord and the day of vengeance is the great tribulation okay let's read now uh, Thessalonians 5 verse 1 to 3 now concerning how and when the all this will happen dear brothers and sisters we don't really need to write to you for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pain begin and there will be no escape we are already seeing the world talking about peace you have listened like treat of peace peace in the Middle East and and this peace agreement that will be signed between Israelis Palestinians Muslim and Christians bringing one apparent apparent peace and harmony between all nations that's what are going to happen that's what we read this agreement will allow the construction of the third temple in Jerusalem and the world will think now everything is at peace and all war wars are over but the Bible says that when they speak of peace and security behold <laughs> behold destruction will come and no way that we are going to escape because the Bible says while people are saying peace and safe it destruction will come and on them suddenly as labor pains on the pregnant woman and they will not escape first Thessalonians 5 3 Paul the Apostle is here saying after the rapture comes the great tribulation it's very clear after the rapture comes the great tribulation the great tribulation is the judgment of God's wrath on those who rejected him and it is not for us his people his bride who love respect and live in holiness first Thessalonians 5 9 says 
For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. And also, the book of Daniel is essential for us to understand about the seven years of the Great Tribulation. I have said for you to read two books, Revelation and also the book of Daniel. Because it's very essential for us to understand. Without Daniel, we are not going to understand about the Great Tribulation. Or Daniel chapter 9, after the 69 weeks of the years that began in the reign of Ataxerxes, the king Ataxerxes, the 69 weeks ended with Jesus dying on the cross. And the last weeks of years, or the seven years, begins. Let's read Daniel 9, 27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Pay attention. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, the middle three and a half, he will put one end to the sacrifice and offering. He's going to stop the sacrifice in the temple. And at the temple, he will set up one abomination that caused desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Or here, we understand that the great tribulation begins with a peace agreement which is a firm alliance between Muslim, Jews, and Christians. In the verse 27, says that in the middle or in the middle of the week, we will break with agreement and we will stop the sacrifice and the offering. Just for you, for you uh, for this sacrifice to end, the temple has to be there, right? But we all know that at this time it has been destroyed. So the peace agreement will allow allow the third temple to be rebuilt again. Or they are going to rebuild the third temple again. And according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Antichrist will desecrate the temple. And there will be a great persecution against the people of Israel. And the great tribulation will last for seven years. And I believe, I believe, I personally, that believers will not go through the great tribulation. But I respect those who think differently. If you think differently from me, there is no cause for division, okay? Because it, you have to be prepared for Jesus' return. You have to be prepared for the rapture. You have to be prepared for the persecution. You have to be prepared for everything. And if you are in love with Jesus, you are prepared for everything that's going to come. But I, along with many others, theologians, believe that the church will not go through the great tribulation. And why? And I'm going to say why I don't believe that. 
First, because the seven, the 70 weeks of Daniel, Daniel 9, 24. Because in these 70 weeks were destined, destined for the people of Daniel, these 70 weeks, not for the church, for the people of Daniel and for the city of Daniel, Jerusalem. Okay? And I want to read this verse, Daniel 9, 24. Sev 70 weeks are determined for your people. Pay attention. For your people, the people of Daniel, and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make one end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. In the seventh weeks, or from the kingdom of Ataxerxes to the death of Jesus, are linked to Israel. Okay? Then, it has nothing to do with the church. This is the point. As it destined for the people of Daniel, the Jewish, and the city of Daniel, Jerusalem. And the great tribulation will involve the whole world. But I believe I, I believe the main target will be the Jewish people and Israel. This is what I believe. The great tribulation, the main target is the Jewish people. For the Jewish people who reject Jesus will be converted. They will burn again. Yes. And the Bible says that all Israel will be saved. You can read Romans 11, 26. All Israel will be saved. And the point is, how, how will Israel be saved? How can they can be saved? After going through the great tribulation, they will repent from their sins and cry out to Jesus. And they are going to cry out, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then Jesus will save them. Amen? Hallelujah. Second reason why the church will not go through the great tribulation is in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9. That, it, that says for God did not appoint us or appoint you to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah <laughs> the great tribulation you know if you, if you read the Bible the great tribulation is called the time of the wrath of the Lamb. And God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. And the Revelation 6, verse 16 says that. I'm going to read. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us. From the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. Wow. The great tribulation will be a time of the Lamb's wrath. Why? Why? Because for 2,000 years, the people did not accept the message of grace and salvation. And now it will be time for judgment. 
and all violence and evil in this world. And also Revelation 14, 10 says that during the great tribulation, people will drink the wine of God's wrath. Or the great tribulation is called the time of God's wrath on sin. But 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 says that God designed us for salvation through Jesus. Or God designed us for salvation and not for wrath. This is the point. Revelation 3.10 says, Because you kept my command to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Our God is saying, because you myself and all of the Christians, true Christians, because we have kept His command and persevere, and He and He will keep us safe from the hour of trial. Hallelujah. And also according to 1 Thessalonians 4, the church will be uprooted from this earth. And the, the Greek word for uprooted that is used here means to be abducted. Let's, re, let's see another verse now that Jesus said in the book of Luke 17, 34 and 36. That says, I tell you, in that night... There will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. This is the rapture that Jesus, in the prophetic sermon of Jesus, Jesus was talking about. This, that means that if you are driving your car, you, you will be snatched or raptured from behind the wheel. And your car is going to go without a driver. And you, or maybe you'll be working. And you'll be suddenly pulled out of your office. And also two people will be sleeping in the same bed. The one who is prepared and, and in love with the Lord will be taken up. And the, war, the other will stay. This is the rapture. And the Antichrist will rise. Will, will only rise. On the earth, after whoever holds him is removed or taken. I'm going to repeat again. The Antichrist will only rise on the earth after whoever holds him is removed or taken. Let's read 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 to 10. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now hold pay attention, the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed 
whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the, the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 to 9. Or in other words, the Antichrist waits for the one who holds him to be removed. Who holds the Antichrist? Paul the Apostle said, is the church through the Holy Spirit. Or when the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit will remain here on earth. Some people say, after the rapture of the church, no more Holy Spirit here on earth. No, of course not. For if, if he is not here on earth, would be no more conversions. No one can born again. No one can born again in the time of the great tribulation. Because we can just born again through the help of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk about more about this time of the great tribulation, the next message. And many people will be saved in the last days. Many people will be saved. In the last day, the, the Holy Spirit is going to be pulled out over the earth. And many people will be saved. And, and what Paul said is that the one who detains the Antichrist must be removed first, then he manifests. Or the Antichrist government in the Great Tribulation will take place after the rapture. Third, Jesus said also that his return will be like in the days of Noah. Okay? Did you remember? That Jesus said that his return is going to be like in the days of Noah. And what happened in the days of Noah? Do you remember? I'm going to read for you. Matthew 24, 37, 38. As it was in the days of Noah, the same, okay? In the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the, in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving marriage. Up to the day, Noah entered the ark. Or, just think about, Jesus is saying that his coming is like, going to be like the days of Noah. And, and God sent the flood in the days of Noah because people were living a sinful life, okay? But what God did with Noah and his family that feared him and loved him, they were guarded and protected from the flood. It's going to be the same. In other words, in other words, Noah was taken up through the waters, through the waters he was taken up, that rose, and the people stayed and came water, and they all here on earth perished. Then what happened? Noah returned and reigned on earth. It's a beautiful picture of the rapture. So the rapture will be the same. Or the church will be raptured. The world will face great tribulation here on earth. And then we return with Jesus to reign with him. Hallelujah. <laughs> or the great tribulation 
is the Lord's judgment on all who have not believed in the truth. This is going to be the great tribulation. Because they have not believed in the truth, they will believe in a lie. By not accepting the love of Jesus, you will be deceived by the false Christ. The Antichrist is a red at work in our days, but will not be revealed until the one who detains him is removed. <laughs> until the church is removed. When the church is removed, then he's going to be revealed to the whole world. Then will come the government of the Antichrist over the earth. Now I want to talk who will rise in the rapture. Who will rise in the rapture? All Christians who have saved the Lord will participate in the rapture. The rapture is the transformation of our body into a glorified body. Yes. Then, first, who will rise in the rapture? All who believe and all who have died believing in Jesus will be taken away. Hallelujah. I want to, to show you to read again. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ, those who have died in Christ, will rise first. After that, we, both including him, who, we, who are still alive and are left, will be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so you will be with the Lord forever. Or all true Christians will be raptured. But those who died in Christ, in love with Jesus, they will be the first ones. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know of someone who has died and loved the Lord? I know many of them. They will be the first ones up. Hallelujah. It's going to be a wonderful day. In that day, <coughs> first is going to be Paul the Apostle, Peter, James, all Christians who have died in the Lord will participate in the rapture. Then, they are going to be first. They are going to receive first seats. <laughs> then, we who are alive and who love the Lord, Jesus will rapture. After that, we are going to be raptured. Hallelujah. I want to read again Revelation 3.10 that says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. To keep, here say, the Bible says, because you have kept my command to persevere, and to keep my command is to obey, to obey the Lord. It is walking in obedience to the word of God. 
this is what we should do. We should walk in obedience to the word of God. For this, my dear ones, I have been living a life and waiting for this day when I'm going to meet with the Lord. And please, I want to ask you, because of this, because of this day when we are going to meet the Lord, if you have been living a life of sin, Please repent from all your sins now. This is the time. Ask for forgiveness. Abandon your sins. Fix your life. Because Jesus is coming back to get his bride. Please. And the bride, the Bible says the bride has prepared her clothes. Clothes here represent your attitudes, your words, your actions. Please be careful. Your dress must be clean, white, without stain, without wrinkles. And those who are caught will enter to the wedding of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Then I challenge you, please, be careful. Look to your life. Now it's time for you to fix your life and be prepared in order for you to enter to the wedding of the Lamb. Amen. And we are living in a difficult times. Trials, temptations, the devil is chasing the church. And the Bible says that the devil comes like a lion looking to destroy us. Satan wants to destroy you, to destroy your life, to destroy your marriage, to destroy your spiritual life. Be careful. Satan wants to destroy you and your, and your family. And you need to consecrate yourself to the Lord. This is the time of consecration. But the Bible says that Satan comes as a lion. But he is not a real lion. The real lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lords of the lords, the king of kings, he is the, the real lion. And he is going to help you. And he is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe that the church will not go through the great tribulation. The trial was destined, destined or it was for the people of Daniel. For the Jewish people and their city. And the people of Israel will, will live to see the great tribulation. They will be persecuted. Many of them, unfortunately, will be killed according to the book of Revelation. A lot of death will happen in the great tribulation. But they will be converted and they will born again and they will return to the Lord. Yes, the Jewish people, they will return back to, to the Lord. And the great tribulation will mark people with the mark of the beast. You have read the mark of the beast. But we have the seal of the Holy Spirit. We have the mark of the promise. And Jesus will come to take those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Do you have the seal of the Holy Spirit inside of you? Then Jesus will come to get you. During the great tribulation, people will be persecuted. They will be tracked. 
everyone will be found using 5 or 6G technology. There is no way to, for you to run. And the mark of the beast will be part of agreement that people will accept from the world government and world control in which there will be a single currency or just one money and there will be persecution and there will be many conversions in this time of the great tribulation yes even those who stayed and were left behind and were not raptured they will become faithful to the Lord because they were left behind and they are going to repent and they are going to say Jesus now I am going to serve you faithfully and they will preach the word of God and many of them will die because of their faith and even Reve Revelation 13 the Bible says that they overcome the Antichrist by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. And, and these who will convert during the Great Tribulation are the Jews and the Gen Gentiles. Both. But the church will be raptured because it kept the word of of perseverance the time is coming please get ready God expects the church to testify about him today God expects you to testify about Jesus to others now it's time to preach the word now it's time to preach the gospel, to be witness for Jesus, to confess Jesus is the Lord, to preach that about the salvation of Christ. Tell to your family, your relatives, to everybody, Jesus is the Lord. And you need to talk to people about Jesus. And this is the time. Because Jesus is returning. Talk about that Jesus is the Lord. And what do you need to do to be saved? And to participate in the rapture? What do you need to do? Give your life to the Lord Jesus. Confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Repent from all your sins. If you have hidden hide sins, sins that no one knows, but is hiding in your life, in your heart, confess to Jesus. Repent. Stop practicing sin and live for Jesus. Con preaching the gospel of Jesus because sin soon we will be with him. We will meet Jesus. Please. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent from your sins. And if you can right now. Close your eyes. I want to pray for you. Close your eyes right now. Beloved Jesus. I thank you because you died for us at the cross to save us. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I, I am asking you right now, forgive my brothers and sisters' sins. Father, forgive all their sins and write their name in the book of life. Father, I pray for them, those who are lost, those who are not sure about their salvation. Father, save them right now, Father. Holy Spirit, bring repentance 
in their hearts right now. And I pray, strengthen and help them to be faithful to you until the end of their lives. Jesus, we love you. We love you and we want to live for you. And we want to be with you forever and ever. Amen and amen. If you repent from your sins, if you confess Jesus, you are saved. Amen. May the Lord bless you. And see you next week for the next message in this series of Apocalypse. God bless you.